All right. So none of you really know each other. You're all traveling to Keswick for various reasons. Um, some of you by train, some of you possibly by car. I'm going to go ahead and leave that up to you guys. Pay attention to your credit rating to figure out how you got there. Um, what you can probably guess is that uh, if you're a credit rating of one or two, you're probably arriving by train. Three or higher, maybe you drove your own car here. And if you're a zero, you probably, uh, well, you jumped the way here. <laughs> exactly. You jumped the train as opposed to caught the train. Um, but since you're all here for various reasons, uh, this is a good opportunity for each of you to tell me how you feel you would have arrived at the Blackstone Hotel in Keswick. Um, and maybe that's an opportunity to also expose why your character's traveling here. That should be in your backgrounds if you're not sure, but feel free to like play around with that a little bit. Uh, why don't we start with uh, Dr. Michael Laws. How did you get here and why are you here? I am here on vacation off of my London practice. I'm probably actually did take a first class train train ride as opposed to driving less work on my part just can sit back and relax enjoy the countryside as it goes by all right uh rosa parker well i actually caught a ride with dr parker uh the two of us came together to Carswick for the antiques fair and uh he was happened to look for a particular item and i went to actually go and look through the actual shop and see if I can find some good bargain prices to bring back home. All righty. Uh, the good Viscount Hillary Exeter. Oh my, well, how did I arrive here? I'm, I'm not even quite sure, to be honest. I, I was on my way to Edinburgh. My, my brother Marmy, that's Marmaduke, was giving a, a, some sort of a, a speech. Uh, he's a surgeon, quite famous, giving a speech or a lecture or something at Edinburgh at the university. Uh, I was on a train north and I, I just, well, a bit too much Moet, if you know what I mean. I came up, uh, now I'm here apparently. Quite a bit of a headache, but um, a little bit more Moet should take care of that. Miss Helen Long. Helen is in the uh, area because she's getting paid by an artist, or excuse me, paid by someone to paint the scenery of the Lake District. It's not my normal type of painting. I don't prefer scenic watercolors. However, I'm getting paid well for it, and my hotel is being comped. Good enough. Jonesy? All right. Well, I think Jonesy probably hopped the train. And uh, just to get some fresh air, get out of the city. And now he's sitting in the bar, hoping someone will buy him a drink to a weary traveler who can offer a wonderful conversation. All righty. Well, so all of you arrived in those means to the city of Keswick, which is a small town in the Lake District of Northern England. Um, and it's an interesting transition from the cities where you have come from to Keswick. It starts out by leaving the city into the uh, industrial parks and the city outskirts. And now you're surrounded by bleak, ominous hills and gray skies uh, of the rolling countryside and the wet and muddy Lake District. All of you are here for the various reasons you've chosen to come. Um, but you also feel some other reason to be here, and you're not really clear what that is. But awaiting some sort of light of inspiration or some direction of purpose, the good Viscount, uh, finds himself now in the Blackstone uh, Hotel Bar, bellied up to the bar, talking to a rather disinterested bartender, um, who seems mostly to want to be rid of you, <laughs> but is... Nevertheless, talking to you drolly about his own dreams when he has to tell you anything as you spill your guts to him. And while you're scanning the room um, and looking about just taking in what is a rural bar sites, which is mostly pictures of famous families or some ridiculous fair or some such scattered on the wall, one picture catches your eye. Uh, it is a picture of a gentleman probably in his mid-30s 
Um, they're about standing next to someone who's clearly his wife. And in the photo, there are six children. Um, and as you look at the photo, you're, you're taken aback because one of the children, uh, the second oldest actually, um, looks like you, but it's a younger picture of you than you remember ever seeing growing up. Hmm. Have I had too much or not enough? <laughs> Would you like another scotch, sir? Oh, I think I should switch to sherry at this point. What's that picture there? Oh, that's uh, wait, wait, which one are you pointing at? The the one with the younger version of me. Oh, good. Um, do you mean the family? Yes. Who's that? Oh, okay. What's that picture? Of? Ah, yes, yes. Uh, that would be uh, um, you'll forgive me, I'm new to the bar. Um, a local, perhaps? Um, I'm unsure. Are you, are you sure you're in that photo? Didn't you say you were from elsewhere? No, no. I just it, It's a, an incredible likeness, and I was curious as to the provenance of the photograph. If you're unsure, I'll see what I can find elsewhere. Or you can simply pour me that sherry. Do you have an Amontillado? Let me see. <laughs> he turns his exasperated back on you. Um, Jonesy, you're sitting at the bar, inching your way towards the, uh, the, the, the clearly noble <laughs> gentleman um, who's appearing to bore a bartender to death. Um, and as he's talking to the bartender, you catch him pointing out a, uh, a photograph on the wall, which you casually glance at. Um, and it strikes you as odd. As you're looking at the photograph, um, you see a picture of you in the photograph as well. One of the children is a, a young photograph of you. Again, younger than anything your dear mother ever shows you. I'm gonna slide up next to the a fancy man and be like, like, um, I saw you were looking at that, that photo. It's on the wall, yes. What my attention? <laughs> I, I couldn't help but notice that there's a picture in there. That little boy looks like me a little bit. Reminds me of me. Is that what you were talking to the bartender about? Did you notice the resemblance of me in that picture? Of course, of course. No, oh, that's amazing. You are a good eye, you do. I said we should celebrate. Perhaps. How would you like to celebrate? Um, You'd like me to uh, buy a drink, wouldn't you? Well, I mean, we all celebrate in your good eye, so it only makes sense that you would buy me a drink. Oh. A gin and tonic. I'll be cheap. A gin and gin and tonic. Very well. A person like yourself, that's nothing. That's like a water. Oh, then you'll take and, a water. Of course, you'll have a and, water. Fine. And I'll give you a better conversation than this bartender who's clearly boring. Um, he has been quite tight-lipped. And if you give me a water, that's the kind of conversation you'll get. And if you give me a gin and tonic, that's the conversation you'll get. Of course. You want a gin and tonic right. conversation? It'd be much more interesting, All I'm right. sure. Absolutely. While you two are having that conversation, um, the good doctor and the, uh, and the, and the younger artist, uh, you two said you, or you two arrived together, correct? I know Rosa Parker and I took the train. I don't remember how the Who artist. Was arriving? Rosa Parker were, were, went with Dr. Parker Dr. to Parker. go antiquing, who is my mentor, who is my mentor. Yes. So there's a good chance that Rosa Parker and I actually arrived together. Sorry, the doctor thing confused me there for a minute. Pardon me. <laughs> Back on track. All right. Um, so in that case, it would be uh, uh, 
Dr. Laws and Parker, both are, you both arrived by train. Um, and really, this is the only place to get a drink in town. So you also find yourself um, in in this bar, as, as do as does the young artist who is basically uh, uh, scouting about trying to find some valuable antiques and hotels sometimes have collections. Uh, and Miss Long, you're looking at the wall um, and you come upon this photograph, uh, as I described to the other characters, um, and you also find yourself in this photo, um, which you look, which since you're up at the wall, you're getting a much closer look and you are 100% certain that is a photo of a very young you. You are the second youngest child in the photograph. Um, you would have only been like three in the picture, but you remember childhood photos from from four, and that is very, very clearly you. The dress even looks like one that you remember from a, from a young childhood, um, which causes you to lean into the photograph closer than than most people would find normal. And this woman doing that draws the attention of of both. Uh, you, Rosa, and you, Dr. Michaels, Dr. Michael, um, and you find yourself pulled over to see what she's looking at and notice as well that the two of you are in the photograph. And it's not long before the Viscount and the hobo have noticed that there are now three people crowded around the photograph they were looking at. Hey, everyone's looking at that photo of me. They, they the must have noticed, they must have noticed your, your, your stunning face in that photograph. Well, that's no hard to believe um is it is the photo somewhere is it on a wall or is it behind the bar it's on a wall on the side of the bar so if you wanted to you could pull it down and look at it yeah that's what i want to do i'm gonna walk up in front of everybody and like take it down <laughs> off the wall and walk over the bar and like start looking at the back of it i want to see if there's any information on it well what are you doing over there trap don't go taking things off the wall that you don't understand hey, the value hey. of well, I mean, that's really rude of you to call me a tramp. Well, you're I mean, gonna act like a tramp. I'll call you something even better. One up no. you. How about that? I'm just taking the photo of myself and taking a look at it, seeing why I'm in it. A photo of yourself. I bet you haven't even seen yourself in a mirror. What you know? What you look like? Well, I know what I look like. Where are you you're... in the photo? Why well, am I in the photo? Or who where are I you in the photo? photo? No, where are I'll you in the photo? photo? I'm in that picture. Okay. Are you in this picture as well? Yes. Well, then you should take it off the wall and see where they got this photo, because you and I was in the same picture. You look nothing like the older man in this picture, because you said it was a family picture, right, Dan? Yes. So I yeah. So Jonesy um, is saying he looks like a different person, not because I clearly see myself in that picture. Mm -hmm. So do we all exactly. see ourselves as the same person? No. Each of oh, you is seeing a different is. child looks like you. Yeah, there's, there's, six, so there's six children Family in the photo. photo. Yeah. Family photo. Two parents, I'm assuming. Two parents. Two yes. parents, six kids. Each of us is one of the kids. Okay. With an extra kid by the looks of it. Which, by the way, Doctor, it's interesting that you point that out because as you're looking at the photo, that sixth child looks dangerously like, like your good brother Joffrey. Hmm. I don't believe we took a vacation here. Dr. Laws, what are you talking about? I mean, I see a photo of myself over here, but I've, I have no idea what any of these other people are talking about either. Now, no, but that one looks like Joffrey. That one looks like myself. Yeah, I don't imagine that anybody knows what we all look like. Can somewhat like, like a younger Rosa? Is this one of those fancy, like, you know, new age paintings that change the way you look at it? Well, as you're looking at the photo and you get closer to it, um, the uh, the tramp pulls it off the wall uh, over the protests of a uh, rather irate bartender. <laughs> and um, uh, in the bottom corner of the photograph, still in the frame, um, is uh, is a denotation that says the Waring family, 1905. Hmm. And by the way, it's 1935 for those of you who aren't up on the current year. Um, well, how is, some how 30 is years ago. spelled? How is Waring spelled? W W A R E I N G. Mm -hmm. uh, to help back? a little bit with the investigative abilities, does anyone have the photography investigative ability? 
I do not. I do. I was going to say, mine says photography two. Mine says photography okay. one. Well, in both your cases, knowing what you know about photography, um, one of you uh, decides to slide the glass off the, the picture frame. Um, and you know that most photographs have a watermark on the back that will denote usually where the photographer took the photo or where they work. Uh, and as you flip it over, it lists a location on the back, Manasty, M-A-N-E-S-T-Y. Um, well, after you take it out of the glass, the rather irate bartender makes his way over to you and yanks it out of your hand um, and then suggests, if you're so fascinated with the concept of Manasty, perhaps you should investigate Manasty. It's on the other side of the lake. Oh, thank you. I was about to ask you that. That's very helpful. What is Manasty? Would you like me to put this photo back? Yes, please. Hands the photo back to you and hands the glass to you as well. <laughs> um, the lake that you're near is called the Derwent Water. Um, the Manasty, giving getting some directions from the bartender, Manasty is on the far side of that at the lower end of the Derwent Water. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, apparently where that photograph was taken, and you all appear to be in there. Um, you did notice, by the way, on the back of the photograph that there was a list of names. Uh, and it did have all of your names. It was Michael, Rosa, Hillary, Helen, Jonesy, and Joffrey. But in all six children's cases, the last name was listed as wearing. Oh, this sounds like a right interesting thing. I've been so bored on the train. <laughs> what say? We, we don't know each other. We all need a reason to connect and, and have a good time. Do, do you want to go and have a trip across the lake and see where this place is? Well, what time of day is it? Mm, it's probably still early in the afternoon, maybe around four or five before dinner. Well, given that it's obvious that someone's having a laugh at our expense, why not? Oh, Dr. Laws, do you think maybe people heard that we were coming and, and they're trying to either scare us away from the antiques or, or something else? I don't believe so. It's a curious thing. It might be, might be someone playing a prank, but I don't believe so. Well, you know, I hope they do come clean. I'm not going to tolerate a liar. I won't tolerate a liar. I just would like someone to cue me in on the joke. It's not quite funny unless everyone knows. Well, just so between you and I, I think the joke is the person you bought a gin and tonic for. <laughs> it's entirely possible. I wouldn't put it past a tramp. <sighs> well, I'm being brash, aren't I? Again, I am, I'm sorry. My name is Rosa Parker. And what shall I call you, good sir? I'm talking to you, Jonesy. You're muted. You can, you can just call me Jonesy. That's what people do. People usually don't call me Trent. Um... Doesn't really make much sense to call me a tramp. Uh, I'm just right. a gentleman like the rest of us. My apologies. Uh, I, I was getting a bit uh, rash, I think, because of the, you know, the, the handling and so to speak. I do hope you'll forgive me. And you said you wanted a gin and tonic. How about to double on me to, you know, smooth things over? I'll always uh, take a gin and tonic. And that'll always smooth things over. Maybe a gentleman, but <laughs> of a sort, but not like the rest of us. Um, Mr. Exeter, um, they seem to all be taking this as, as a very large joke, but you were almost deeply offended by this situation because you're clearly a Viscount, you're a noble. How dare someone imply that you were born to some commoner in some rural Lake District town? Not a funny joke. And yet, you know that's you in that photograph. And that is upsetting. How much stability would you like to spend on the stability roll you're about to make? Or would you like to just let it roll and see what happens? I'll just let it roll. All righty. You know, it is disturbing, but 
clearly it's a joke or a misunderstanding or someone is just trying to get the better of you. I mean, you do always get in your little tiffs with your with your siblings. So it's clearly that. So nothing, nothing is amiss here, but you what just a, can't shake the frustration. What a graphic fakery and, and Perry is usually the one who does those kinds of things. Must be him. He's in on it, Indeed. at least. Marty would never stoop so low. No, and Jack is just far too honest. It must be Perry. <laughs> Still, I'd like to find the person responsible. Not quite a funny joke. So this picture was taken across the lake and now it's here. I wonder who this family is. Also a good oh, thing to check. Now I know all my brothers and sisters. Just kidding. I, mean, I have a brother. You do not um, look like him, unfortunately. I mean, but we're in the picture together. We should all yeah. celebrate. Because it's, clearly, it's clearly a photographic fakery. You've seen spirit photography, supposed ghosts in photos. It's, it's trickery. It could also be an anomaly. It could be an anomaly. People occasionally look like each other. You're right. It is probably an anomaly. But let's check it out anyway. I want to know who this handsome little devil is and what happened to him. I think it'd be a whole lot more fun than just spending yet another evening drinking anyhow. I mean, we can do both. I got to ask this gentleman to fill it up. We keep drinking all night and solve this mystery. Is there anything peculiar about the adults in the picture or anything striking about them? Um, th no, they look generally like, a, like your average middle-aged uh, Depression-era British family that is not necessarily struggling. Um, the man certainly looks happier than the woman. In fact, as you're staring at the woman, she feels very, very familiar to you, uh, but you can't place it. But she has this, um, this, this sadness in her eyes in the photograph uh, that you can't quite put a, put a finger on. I'd be willing to go and take a look. I would love to see uh, what the sunset looks like hitting the, the town over there. So it would help me out. So I've got like my easel, portable easel all packed up and stuff. And I'll go with, with you all. Oh, would you like a little bit of help with carrying that hen? Oh no, it, it's quite smart actually. And I'm, it's like, like a backpack like situation on my paints and stuff all folded nicely on my back. Oh, that's fancy. So do you go by Helen then or do you go by something else? Oh, apparently we've all had a picture taken together, so you can call me Helen. Oh, well, Helen, well, I'm Rosie, in case you didn't read and see. Uh, fancy that, you know, we'll have to stick together and figure these things out. Um, shall we go first and let them clean up the bar, bar, bar tab? Sounds <laughs> Everyone always trying to live on your dime, Hillary. Someone else is paying next time. <laughs> Very well. I, I will have paid if for Rosa. Going, if we're all going together, I might as well. I'll let a gift from your betters. Yes, sweetheart. I'll go ahead and have a cab and I'll get this one so you don't feel too much pins in your buttons. <laughs> oh. Um, Jonesy, you're wondering how you're going to pay for the cab, or are you planning to just hitch a ride and hope somebody else keeps footing the bill? Someone will always foot the bill. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> just gonna go with. I'm not gonna say anything. Jonesy was spoken like Jonesy a true was gentleman first... tramp. Yeah, I thought um, Jonesy was the first one out the door and just pointing at the viscount. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Um, all right, so you guys are heading out. Uh, are you heading straight down to Manasty, or are you doing any other exploring here in Keswick first? Uh, I'm pretty set on getting to Manasty personally. Um, I'm going to be easily distracted if someone brings something up, but otherwise I'm looking to hail the first cab and then going to tap my foot impatiently for everyone else to show up. All right. It doesn't take too long. Um, Someone eventually sees you and yells at somebody down the street in this small town, um, and a uh, uh, a guy who's reading some paper and leaning against a uh, rusty-looking thing that might move uh, starts turning the crank and then eventually drives it over to where you all are waiting. Um, 
it'll be a tight fit to get the five of you in. A couple of you will need to sit up front. Um, who's going to sit up front with the driver? Who's sitting in the back? I'll sit up front with the driver. I'll sit up front too. Yeah. There needs to be two up there. Oh my. I mean, we could probably fit Jonesy in the trunk. This is a death trap. <laughs> but I'm just drunk enough to go along with it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you all get crammed into this, and uh, the taxi driver turns to um, the two in the front and says, uh, where am I taking you? Oh, well, I mean, this sounds a bit fresh, but I'd like to go to Manasti, but not the, you know, Manasti that you're thinking of, the actual town across the lake. <laughs> I was waiting for that joke. Uh, <laughs> would you prefer the... Uh, the, the low road around the lake um, or would you prefer me to drop you at the ferry or would you prefer the high road by the moors? Well, I always go the high road. I don't want to disregard the best if I can. Which, which way is quickest? Um, well, the high road or the, the, the road along the south would be about the same distance. The ferry would be the longest, but it is a gentle ride on the ferry. Your choice. And he seems to be talking directly to you as soon as he realizes you're a noble and probably who's paying him. <laughs> Which is the most scenic route? Ah, that would be the route along the moors, sir. Let's go that way. Very good. And with that, you're off. Um, as you're making the, the pass along, there are two moors that, that rise above uh, the Derwent water. Um, and again, against the dark sky, it's, it's a bleak region and the hills are almost oppressive leading up into those moors uh, with no one appearing to live in there, except perhaps maybe a few sheep you think you see grazing on the high grass um, and maybe a lonely cottage or two. Um, as you're making your way around, though, uh, Jonesy, you, you fall asleep on the ride because you have become very adept at falling asleep when packed in like a sardine in a can. Um, and uh, while, while you're uh, sleeping, um, what are the rest of you doing? Are you just taking in the sights? Are you discussing the, the photo? How are you all handling that? I would, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, I'm actually going to tap into my history and see if I can glean any information out of the driver about why the moors are called the moors and why is there's three different routes to get there and what are we driving past today and how long have you been doing this and why does your car smell like that i was going to ask i wanted to ask the driver any local lore about the moors because almost there's always a story about moors in small towns um and then i'm also going to oh, be of course. taking out a sketch pad and pencil and i'm going to try from memory to draw the the, the woman in the picture who looked so sad yet familiar, just to just because yeah. that really affected me to think I knew her. Yeah, and you you you're and as you're drawing her, you are very certain that you know her. The more you draw her, it's almost natural. Not like you've known her all your life, but you knew her once and then she simply vanished from your life one day. I'm gonna say um, out loud under my breath, like who are you? Like like I'm very taken with her. Oh well, my name is Rosa dear. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to turn my back a little and keep scribbling. Uh, Jonesy, I sent a message to you. Where are my manners? I haven't even introduced myself. I'll be apparently paying for the ride and some of our drinks, so you might as well know who it is you're riding with. I'm the Viscount Hillary Exeter. Hilled to my friends. Well, if I count, Tom, may I call you Hilt? Uh, as you may not be, you know, normally rubbing shoulders with the likes of us, I, I do happen to sell to many of the likes of yourself. And well, I tend to look up to you and I respect you as much as I respect your wallet and respect your taste in fine things. Respect for my wallet, everyone has. But yes, of course, you may. Thank you for asking. Well, thank you as well. <laughs> Um, while you're all enjoined in this casual conversation and you near Monasty proper, um, Jonesy startles awake um, and looks as though he's looking for something, uh, but then calms down. Jonesy? 
Yeah, I'm just going to keep looking to see if any of the surrounding looks familiar. Um, and the hills and the dream, or if, if it looks like I'm we're driving past any of this stuff. Um, and um, and just out of curiosity, when I have this dream, is there any, does it does it seem special to me, or does it seem like a normal dream? Does it seem like this is something unique, or just been drinking too much again? Um, at first, your inclination is that it must have been just the drink. You know, the gargle dims everybody's brain. But um, as you come to and you're looking out the windows trying to get your bearings, because, you know, we all have that listlessness as we come out of a sleep where you have that like, Whoa, and the dream is still kind of there. It's sort of like when you're falling and you startle awake. Um, you have that kind of feeling as you startle awake. And at first, the dream starts to fade and you think, man, that was just a weird dream. But as you're looking around, you notice that the moors look look very similar. And that lake glittering in the darkness, you are now driving past. All right. Would you like to donate so, anything to the stability test? Um, nope. I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And so you do reduce your stability by three. Oh, man, I got lots of spare. <laughs> um, it's 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 haunting. Uh, you fell asleep before you got the look at the lake that you have now, but the look at the yeah. of the lake that you have now, as you're on the north side, is the look you had of it in your dream while you were asleep. Okay. You're not going to believe it. I had a dream. And it's. I don't believe it. It's a dream. Oh, no, dreaming is fairly standard in sleep. But there's a Even stone. Trying... There's like a stone circle here, and I had a shovel, and we, and I was gonna dig something up. It was gonna happen, and I can't get it out of my head now. Um, That's a little less scary. Is this a dream uh, you've had before? Uh, no. And I, it's all about this lake, and it's all about these hills, and it's all about, mm, I think something needs to get dug up. It's uh, hold, a mess. Uh, hold up here, Jonesy. Now, are you trying to say that, you know, you used to dip your foot into archaeology? You sound much like someone who just found a ruins or some sort looking for something. Mm, that's possible. Um, <laughs> I mean... Oh, how much study I of archaeology has he actually done? Have. Small I mean, circle. I mean, first you have a dream and then you go out and dig, I think is how it goes. Not it's, typically. It's not usually how archaeology is done. That's quite right. But I'll, I'll guess her to the driver and, and gently touch his shoulder and go, is there any type of stone circles around here? Oh, are you... An interesting question. You must be talking about Castle Rig Stone Circle. It's a local oddity up in the moors. Dream. So oh. there is a stone circle in the moors. Any other interesting tales of the moors? Oh, great many, but that's something you would want over a, a beer, and I recommend you find a local pub and someone willing to uh, tell you the tall tales of the region. Uh, someone more versed in that than I. How do we get to the stone circle? Oh, well, you just hike your way up into the moors. It's probably a good two, three hour walk. But once you're up there, it's impossible mm -hmm. to miss. It's a breathtaking site, supposedly built before we uh, thought humans resided in the uh, islands here. Hmm. Hmm. I think that someone wants me to do that. That does not sound appealing, a three hour walk. No, and also oh, it's, so much, it's so much harder to properly evaluate the cost of things that don't have this human interaction. No one believes it's real, and they always just seem to avoid it and call it fake. <laughs> but I am curious, though. Oh, let's say if we know this photo frame is a bust, we, we go on the hike. I mean, why not? We're all friends. 
I'm sure the yeah, cab driver would appreciate it. Like today, it is already late afternoon. Well, the night is young, and so are we. <laughs> oh, I'd only be willing to go on that long a hike if there was a rifle and a stag in it for me, but let's look at this photograph first. Well, just between me and you, Hild, I've got a shotgun in my, uh, my uh, baggings, but, you know, I only use that for the people who are, you know, completely fresh, like Jonesy was being before he introduced himself. Mm. <laughs> um, and about that time, the uh, the cab oh, comes to a halt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you find yourself um, in what it, what can only be described as an even smaller village. <laughs> like there's really, really not much here. Um, driving into the town. Um, into Monasty, there's a few houses. Um, you pass by really an old schoolhouse, what looks like a farm and uh, like an inn. Um, and not knowing where, because all you said was Monasty, the, uh, the uh, taxi driver drops you off in front of an inn with a faded sign, the Leeward Inn. Before we let the taxi driver go, I would ask if he knows of the family in the photo. I forget the name. Waring? Waring, then? Waring. Waring. Uh, well, take a look at your uh, investigative abilities and see if you have anything there that might, uh, might help you uh, coax the information you're looking for out of him. Are you asking me to look at it, or you are looking at it? Uh, you. you know, I'm asking you, to, is there an investigative skill that you would like to apply in this situation, or how are you trying to get the information from him? Because there are, there are several ways you could approach him. Mm -hmm. um, oral history would be oral what history. I would say. Okay. So you're talking to him then about stories of the region, and things like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, and you were looking for more information on which, the town or the circle? Neither. The family. Neither. Family. There we go. Sorry. Got a little lost there. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, the, the photograph, as you describe it, um, the, the gentleman kind of, kind of uh, uh, chuckles as you're, and says, oh, yes, I remember. Uh, there was a, there was a, a, a lovely gentleman, a, a Jack Waring. Um, he was a, uh, the local schoolmaster. Um, he used to occasionally uh, uh, wander up into Keswick to shop or to visit the hospital or the library there in Keswick. Um, he had a family. Uh, I know something, something happened and he, his first family was scattered, but he, uh, he did eventually remarry, I know that. But that's about all I know about him. Is he still in town? Not that I'm aware of. As, as I recall, uh, he just he just vanished one night. Hmm. Uh, but perhaps some locals who live near him down here in Manasty would know more. Very well. And he holds out his hand. <laughs> I figured. Good. I figured. Have the madam of the uh, of the inn ring me up if you need a ride back to Keswick. Will do. For the ride. Thank you. And with that, he is off, leaving a dusty trail behind him, as there are no paved roads in this town. Shocker. <laughs> to no oh. one's surprise. <laughs> Oh, my old friend, where have you brought me? Looking at my flask. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm going to ignore the flask and take it as a direct invitation for conversation. Oh, Hild, I appreciate you calling me old friend, but um, I don't know where we've taken ourselves. It's fascinating. Should we go inside? Um, oh, and... I... oh, did you say Hillary or Helen? Uh, Hild. Oh, Hild, I heard Helen, sorry. Oh, well, it can't be worse than that taxi. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, start walking in after the uh, affirmation from one of them. All right. I'll squeeze in between um, them. It would be the most likely trip. place we'll find information without going door to door. Hmm. They'll be able to tell us Fair if there point. is a person who has a camera in the area. <laughs> if uh, the gentleman, the taxi driver told us is still living in this area. The father in the, the photo. Yeah. Um, as you push open the door to the end, uh, it clearly is a, a traditional British inn, which means that it mainly serves as a bar for the villagers. And occasionally they will rent a room as long as you have the money. Uh, it's an old inn that probably 50, 60 years old, though given the age of, of the Lake District, it's actually probably young. But it's in some degree of disrepair. Uh, you're met with kind of a uh, suspicious look from, from the woman you can only assume is the landlady. And she eyes you drying off a glass behind the bar. Oh, well, this place just looks help? absolutely quaint. That's one word for it. Oh, hello, dear. Um, we are actually visiting for the antiques fair. I know other reasons as well, I'm sure, but the antique fair is while I'm in town. Um, we happened to come across here for the most fascinating reason. We found, well, pictures of ourselves as I begin to regurge completely unprovoked the reason that we are traveling over to here. And I am actively uh, trying to get a feel for how this person is responding. And uh, if you're okay with it, I, I'm trying to get an understanding from a sense of trouble perspective. Is this person going to be hostile towards me or are they going to be someone that I can create a business relationship with? Mm. Um, somewhere in between. Uh, you, you get the, uh, the feeling that she's standoffish because she's in a small town and isn't used to strangers and doesn't know how to respond. But it's not a hostile standoffish. It's just a suspicious of outsiders kind of standoffish, if you know what I mean by that. Completely. And I know the easiest way around that is to um, ask what it is that she recommends to drink and order from the menu. That is her absolute favor for people who are new and want to make a good impression. And then I'll look over at um, Hild and Dr. Law and Helen and Jonesy and be like, well, come on, you know, we've got plenty of things to talk about, but we should do it on an empty stomach. Maybe that was a three hour drive. Well, um, after a moment, she, uh, she, she looks around trying to find something that resembles a fine drink for you. <laughs> <laughs> Most of what she has here is, could best be described as pig swill. Uh, but she eventually does. Um, one for each of you, then. Of course. Mm -hmm. Even what brings you to her? Even that yeah. one, gesturing to Jonesy. I, when she looks at you, Jonesy, you can almost see the look on her face, like she smelled you, even though you know she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, she starts pouring drinks and only gives like a half portion to you, Jonesy, and just kind of puts each of them down in front of you. Well, she lovely. Um, I'll sure. swap my drink with Jonesy's. Fair enough. How kind. <laughs> <laughs> or you're just trying not to be drunk, which is also not always the worst idea. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Jones, I think you would enjoy this one more than I would. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate Cheers. it, I do. Cheers. Always a gentleman. You know, it's gentlemen who treat the least of us like the best of us. Oh, Helen. Well, um, everyone else 
I might disagree with that, but. While everyone else is enjoying their drinks, um, Helen, you're looking around the room. Uh, there are a few other people here. Um, there's a, a farmer uh, sitting, at, sitting at one of the tables who's clearly putting his feet up at the end of the day. Um, a couple of other locals that are of some sort of profession that is less clear than the farmer in his filth stained overalls. Um, and then there's also a gentleman who's bellied up to the bar and he looks decidedly out of place and visibly shaken. Uh, what looks peculiar about him that I would stop and stop and assess him more than others? There's something about his features that are that are familiar to you. Like the locals here, like they they look British, but they look like anyone else you meet. But you feel like in some way you know the gentleman who who, who looks. Uh, I'm going to. Looks, is he sitting at the bar? Yeah, his hands are shaking and he's trying to keep a, a, a drink from spilling as he's taking sips. I'm gonna uh, go up and sit next to him and I'm gonna say, good evening. I, I'm, I'm here for work and I'm doing some, um, some looking at local information before I, I start my work. I'm an artist and I'm gonna slide my sketchbook over and I'm not even looking to see if he's like looking at me because I know he can hear me. And my sketchbook has this picture of that woman I drew that looked familiar to me. And I also wrote on it, I wrote Jack wearing two wives, uh, question mark, because the, the cab driver had told us he remarried. Um, and I said, do you know, are you local? Does this woman look familiar to you at all? Um, as you're talking to him and you kind of just hold the picture up for him. You're holding up the drawing to him or are you sliding it in front of him? Just How kind of sliding it in front of him. Um, as soon as you slide the, the, the image in front of him, um, he stops shaking for a minute as there's a bit of familiarity in his, in his face, like he recognizes the picture as well. Um, uh, but then the shaking returns and he looks at his, I'm so, sorry, I, I, I'm a bit rattled, that's all. Uh, what, what, what was your name again, ma'am? My name is Helen Long, uh, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice that um, maybe right now is not the best time to talk, but I totally did notice, but I'm gonna pretend that I, I didn't. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying No, 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 maybe it's fine. Are you, do you know anything about medicine? My, my, my name is Joffrey. And when he says that, uh, that catches your attention, Michael. Um, I, I don't know too much about medicine, but I am traveling with someone I just met, Dr. Laws. I'll look over. Hello. Your Dr. brother is sitting next to Helen. Alfred, what are you doing here? Oh, he hello, Mikey. Um, well, I, so, so And as he's talking, he keeps like putting his fingers like on his wrist, like he's trying to find something, like like he's looking for his pulse, and and he's having trouble focusing on you while he's doing that. Jeffrey, what did you do to your wrist? I'll, I'll take his hand. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a pulse. So, Jeffrey, what did you do to your wrist? I. I don't know. I just, I feel like I, I can't, I, I'm finding it a little hard to breathe. I, I'm, Mikey, am I dying? Uh, I look, look at my skin. And as he points out his hands, like the skin on his fingers is like loose and wrinkling. Dr. Laws, did you know your brother was going to be here? No, I had no, I had no idea he was here. Hmm. <clears throat> No pulse. Huh. What what are you doing? You should be I don't back know. I just I felt I felt like I, I, I couldn't like I said I, I was having trouble breathing and then and then I felt like I had to be here. 
but I don't know where here is or why I felt the need to come to this town. And, and, and now I'm having trouble and this, this is happening to me. Like, help me, Mikey. How long have you been here? Well, just, just a few days. When did you get here? Not more than an hour ago. What, 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 did, did you feel called here as well? What, what brought you? I was on vacation on the town just across the lake, and I saw inconsequential things. You know, um, I'm waiting. I, I'm Jonesy so checking the pulse to see if he is really shallow, really slow. All right, you have medicine, correct? Yes. Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so you start checking him, giving him more a more thorough examination and according to like you you check for his like you can tell he's breathing but he feels clammy the skin is loose he has no pulse when you feel around his heart there is no heartbeat by normal human biology jo uh, joffrey is dead go ahead and make me uh would you like to donate anything to the stability roll I will go ahead and add two to that roll. All righty. <laughs> Waiting for that. You are very, very disturbed by this, but you you drill your your uh, so spend the two that you uh, used, and then just drill in. Just you just drill, and you're like, I'm not going to freak out. That's not going to help him. I'm not going to freak, freak out. out. It's not going to help him. <laughs> and but it doesn't make any sense like medically he is dead but he's breathing and talking to you uh, while where you're, are you while you're dealing with that oh go ahead where are you staying joffrey uh, here in the end i'm just trying to figure out like what, what i why i know i'm meant to be here and while you're talking to him let me deal with this other thing um Hillary and Jonesy, you two did not wander over. Uh, Rosa, you've been kind of leaning with one ear on both ends there. I've been paying but, attention. Um, yeah, and, and one of the things that actually, Hillary, you are much more aware of the, the, the accoutrement of your surroundings everywhere you go. And you did notice something that you thought was odd in Keswick, that you notice is especially odd now that you're here. Um, when you were in Keswick, they had the wireless on behind the bar but it just had like a low static and there was a, a gentle tune coming through the static and you just figured the radio was out of tune. But there's a wireless on the behind the bar here as well. And it's just static here as well. Is there a similar tune or is it just, just static? It's just static. But as you focus on it, you start to hear that that gentle tune, like you can almost make it out, but you can't quite. And it sounds like there's voices, but you can't quite grab onto them. Hmm. Jonesy, as you watched the uh, the good Viscount staring intensely at a uh, at a wireless, <laughs> like it were a TV, which does not exist yet, um, <laughs> he, uh, 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 you start to notice it too that it's odd um but you're a little bit more aware of people whereas the viscount's more aware of things and the thing that you notice um is that even though there's static coming through it one of the locals who's sitting near the the uh um the wireless is is mouthing like he's singing along to a song but it's just static coming out of the radio I'm gonna kind of like nudge over to him and be, and then say something like, um, I, "I love this song. I I want to sing along with it. But what what is this song called? Help talk. Can you help me out with the lyrics?" It, oh, of course. And he he rattles off a very popular tune in London right now, one that you've heard a thousand times. But that is not what's coming through that radio. You hear like a distant tune, but it's nowhere near what he's describing. What he's describing is like an orchestral piece, with a little <laughs> bit of lyric on top of. It. Okay. I'm just going to lean back into the bus room and be like, well, that's odd. <laughs> it is odd. I'm not hearing that, dude. No, no one is. 
That's not what's <laughs> playing. Yeah. Well, either his All right, back over to broken or ours are broken. <laughs> back over to the doctor um, like and, uh, and Long. Um, Jonesy is, yeah, Jonesy seems really, really unsure of what he's doing in town. Or not Jonesy, sorry, uh, Joffrey. This seems very sure, unsure of what he's doing in town. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's really shaken. Um, and he doesn't seem to have a good answer for why he came. He just says he feels like he was called. Well, where were you earlier today? What were you doing? Well, I, I got on the train um, last night, and then, then, or yesterday. No, was yet was it yesterday? When did I arrive? Uh, I will within the motion, last couple. Of I will motion over to the actual bartender. When did my brother arrive? Uh, comes walking in. Oh, he he checked in here. Uh, 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 yesterday what do you know him he's my brother oh well isn't that lovely family reunion i don't recognize either of you although you do look oddly like uh like so, like a family from around here are you here visiting family not intentionally would this be the uh was it warrington warrington wearing wearing warrington just wearing the Waring, the Waring family. Oh yes, good old Jack. I haven't thought of him in years. He still Jack live here. Waring. He used to run the schoolhouse. Um, he did live here. Uh, he vanished a few years ago. Um, left his uh poor wife by herself here in town. A uh, lovely woman named Mary. Um, lives just up the road. Are you uh? Oh, you look so much like him. Are you? Are you nephews or? Part of what I'm here, here doing, but I'm curious, is, did my brother mention what he was doing in the area when he came by? He seems to slap, slap, slap. not be entirely uh, cognizant at the moment. Uh, he keeps asking about the town and asking why he's here, but I don't have answers for him. Uh, does he have like a mental issue? Is he? Is he soft in the brain? He wasn't before. <laughs> uh, Rosa, what are you doing while this is going on? I am actively leaning over to the left of like, oh man, so that's Dr. Law's brother. And what was Helen trying to find out with that picture? She didn't show it to me. I wanted to see the picture too. What, what, what's Jonesy doing? What is that static? Oh, man, and I'm eventually going to turn around and I'm going to uh, see whether or not the farmer or anyone else is basically staring at what we're doing and uh, hyper-focusing on us a little too much. Um, yeah, the farmer, uh, he seems a little uh, worse for the wear, a um, little frustrated. He's drinking awfully heavily. But he doesn't seem particularly focused on 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 you. Do you approach him? Yeah, I figure I'd get up and make a little bit of small talk, uh, a soft brush. Hello, my name is Rosa. And what's your name? Oh, uh, uh, good day. Uh, uh, I'm Eugene Gregson. I'm a, a shepherd here. I also raise a well. I I rose a pig until recently, but but yes, yeah, mostly a shepherd. What, what brings you our, our lovely little town? Well, Mr. Drake's actually we're off on a bit of an adventure, if I may say so myself, though I may, you know, attest that my friends may not call it an adventure yet, but they'll come around. <laughs> so I was just curious, though. Um, well, small, quaint town, nice little place, polite, lovely people. And, well, we find ourselves in a bit of a pickle. You see, uh, my friends over there, Dr. Laws and Helen, that are apparently having some issues with his brother and he looks quite unwell. Um, is there some issues with the food or drink around here? Because I must attest, the beer was not quite up to my usual standard and I'd like to know if the water's a bit sour. He seems almost offended, like you're implying <laughs> that the meat he sells is bad or something. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
says, well, the beer, I mean, it's local swill, but nothing that would make someone lose their senses unless they drank too much of it. Uh, That's true, true. Uh, and I mean, oh, I'm sorry if I uh, caused offense, but as you may know, you know, even the best and most uh, dedicated saint uh, raising animals, taking care of them and butchering them to perfection can still hand them over to a sow that tramples and shits on them and calls it a delicacy. So out of curiosity, I'm most concerned about my uh, dear friend, Dr. Law's brother. And if you're thinking that the, there's no possible issues going on here where like uh, the water has been contaminated, uh, do you draw water from the lake or, or do you have like a rain catcher? Uh, a little of both. We also have a well, um, but the water from the lake is usually good enough. Okay, well, that's good to I know. Mean, we don't have fancy aqueducts and and that newfangled plumbing that you're starting to see wherever it is that you're from. Oh yes, it is quite nice. I must attest. But um, I don't want to bore you. But well, I'm curious. Has the radio been out of tune for long? What are you talking about? It's playing a lovely song right now. Well, perhaps I need to get my ears checked. Maybe the uh, cab driver I came over with talked them off and I'm just all a flutter, but um, I only hear a brief just static. Static? It's, um, I don't know what the locals are listening to in the city, but it's one of those big orchestral arrangements. Now listen here. I would appreciate it if you told me the truth. I can hear static. I believe my compatriots are having the same problem based on the fact that Hild and Jonesy are looking at that, well, contraption, I forget the name of it, is basically spewing out nothing but metal on metal with a, a soft, subtle sound underneath of it. Are you as daft as the shaking one? No, it is clearly playing music. The song will, if you don't like the song, I'm sure it will change in a moment. It does every so often. That's how those, uh, that, what do they call them, uh, radios work. Well, if this is how you're going to act, I wish you a good day and a better night as I go and walk back to the table. Let me know if you see anyone running off with a pig. <laughs> he goes back to his drink. <laughs> There's a story oh, there. Just just because Dr. Law has kind of turned his attention from Joffrey to the innkeeper kind of asking questions like when did he arrive here? Um, just sure. because Joffrey was so upset, I want to be like that that has to be very scary that you can't feel your own pulse. But I can assure you, you are as alive as I am. And when I say those words, I actually check my own pulse because I'm kind of that freaks me out a little bit, thinking about what if not. So I'm going to just kind of very, um, very surreptitiously kind of just put two fingers on my, on my wrist and see if I can feel anything. Maybe I would assume it's going to be beating very fast. Yeah. You know, it, there is a, there is a brief moment, moment of panic until you move your fingers a few inches and do find your pulse. <laughs> and it is, uh, it, it is moving quickly. Um, quicker now because you thought you didn't have one for a moment, but you, you definitely found it. How about you, Jonesy? What are you doing at the moment? Uh, I'm just looking around. I think, hmm. I don't know. I feel like I'm looking around for a shovel right now. I might go head off. <laughs> well, you know, you could always ask someone for one, I suppose. <laughs> I'm sure someone like the farmer would probably have one. I feel like if I walked outside, I could probably borrow one from someone. That is probably also true. <laughs> it is a small town. Um, I'm going to go turn the wireless off. There's some brief protests to you turning the music off, but people eventually just grumble and go back to their drink and um, talking to whoever they're sitting with. Um, Ada, the uh, the barkeep, she uh, turns to you and is like, you didn't have to turn it off. I could have changed the station for you. 
I was tired of it. Another drink, please. Very good. Uh, she pours you more of that well water with a little bit of liquor in it. <laughs> um, certainly not what you're up, what you what you're used to. Fortify it from my flask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fill up the rest from from inside the coat, as it were. <laughs> All right, so you guys are sitting in the bar while all this is going on. Um, uh, eventually, do you all regroup and kind of fill each other in on what you've heard as parts of the bar? Um, do you more on your own? How are you handling this? I'm gonna sit back down. Okay. Yep, I'll, I'll be, um, you know, loose lipped here. I'm basically going to thank you for turning off the um racket it was beginning to get under my skin and then i'll be looking over and just directing attention over to dr law and his brother going oh, i wonder what they're doing over there i do wish they'd come back i would be trying to get my brother into his own room because he is staying at the inn by both the innkeeper and he said yeah um, and on that note, would you guys like to make arrangements with the innkeeper to stay for the night here? Sure. Okay. Uh, it's just a few shillings for the evening. Um, oh, oh dear. The only one of you that might have an issue there is Jonesy. I don't think I'm going to stay here for the evening. I think I'll find some place outside to be. Oh, I don't. I don't have a okay. problem paying, but I definitely have issues with it. <laughs> <laughs> um so she leads you all up the stairs to the second floor where the rooms are at uh with uh, uh with uh, dr michaels you have uh joffrey in tow with you um the rooms are absolutely are, are, are quaint but absolutely puritanical affairs with a, a small desk a single bed a lamp and that is basically it um, and at this point, it's gotten a little later in the evening. It's around eight or nine by the time all of this is settled in. Um, is there anything else you guys would like to do for the evening, or would you all like to turn in and regroup in the morning? Um, make some small talk with Helen to get a look at the picture. Uh, ask, like, you know, basically cut up on what she was talking about. But that's it. Not, nothing worth role playing through. Sure. I'm assuming you're more than willing to show the picture, right, Helen? Or not? Yeah, and I'm going to just explain to Rosa, like, I just feel like I know her um, and kind of that eerie feeling I get from the picture. Do I get the same feeling when I look at the picture? You do. Um, she looks familiar, but you just can't figure out why. Okay. Like, you're right. She does I'm... have that face. Hmm. I feel a lot of, you know? strange and i won't really say anything meaningful it's just fair enough all right well for the rest of the evening then um most of you turn in and uh, uh settle in jonesy um i'm assuming you find somewhere outside a nice uh lean to or something that you will protect you from rain should it arise it is a pleasant night it's not a terrible time to be sleeping outside yeah that's fine Okay. Um, during the night, though, um, given how strange things have been, you almost all feel like you're expecting odd dreams. And the city does not disappoint. Uh, Dr. Laws, um, as you drift off to sleep, you find yourself standing in a stone circle. Um, and as you're standing there, there are others there. They're, they're, uh, they're dancing around you with this bizarre uh, ritualistic movement, like whirring as they hold their arms like horizontally and dance. It's, uh, but it seems, it seems right, but you can't, you can't figure out who they are. Like they're just people dancing. Um, and when you look down, there's uh, uh, Joffrey is lying prostrate 
uh, beside an open grave on the ground. Um, uh, in your hand, you find uh, this strange, uh, this strange metal knife. <sighs> but you know what you have to do. And as you realize that, you lean down and you slice Joffrey's throat, then his calves, with diagonal strokes, and you wake up sweating in the morning. Um, Rosa and uh, Helen, um, when you two drift off to sleep, um, it's very odd. You find yourself dancing in the middle of this uh, stone circle that's reminiscent of the one that, that Jonesy described. Um, as you leap and, and were about, uh, yet you execute the steps without thinking, like you've known how to do them always. Uh, in the center of where you're dancing, th there's a figure uh, bringing down a knife on someone. It looks like a human sacrifice. And, and you too as well wake up sweating. And, and Hillary, now you, when you fall asleep, you're lying down. There is this familiar comforting smell all around you. Um, and although you, you, you can't place it, it, but then you realize it's, it's, it's the smell of soil. And when you, you feel enclosed and safe and warm in the soil, and when you open your eyes, all you see is soil. When you open your mouth, soil rushes in, but you can still breathe. Um, and you're not scared. And you sink deeper and deeper into the earth, feeling safer and safer. And then you wake up as well in the morning, sweating. Um, this is going to be a stability test for the for the four of you. Uh, does anyone want to donate stability for their own test? No. So let it roll. So Dan, just to make sure I understand it, so it's a stability ten. So some of those points if you want to add to the total, correct? You, you could spend some of those points to add to the roll that I'm about to make. Mm -hmm. um, if you pass it, then the points you spent to pass the test are all you lose. But if you fail the test you you still lose whatever the cost of this test would be which is what okay. i know does that make sense yes i'll use two two okay so um rosa you're down three because you spent three uh and helen you spent two and now we will do our rolls doctor i did yours just now you are fine rosa you are fine as well uh hillary uh hillary you're not donating anything to that or are you just taking the roll I'm just taking the roll. Okay. All right. Um, you have never liked the thought of being buried, and you don't know why it felt so comforting and safe. Reduce your stability by three. Uh, and Helen, um, you are fine as well, other than the stability that you spent. And other than that, it is morning. And you're not sure. Maybe you'll get lucky and there's a continental with this night. I sincerely doubt it. But... <laughs> Are you all making your way downstairs? Oh, yeah. I'll make my way downstairs. Um... I want to check on Joffrey first. Um, when you check on Joffrey, he does not look like he slept a wink. Um, but uh, other than that, he seems the same as he seemed last night. Uh, um, I'll go ahead and break the silence with the group when we are all uh, downstairs, assuming at the table, um, trying to figure out mm -hmm. what to do for breakfast, if anything. Well, I've had the strangest, just weirdest dream last night, dancing like I haven't for ages in some sort of choreographed manner and run, you know, uh, I'm going to look around. Uh, Jonesy, would, would you have woken up early enough to join us, or would you still be snoozing outside? 
Oh, I probably woke up before all of you. Okay. Um, so, but I was, I was planning on walking the streets a little bit and seeing if anybody was up trying to just like make friends with people as I walk by and see if they'll give me some food, if something smells good or if they're selling stuff or taking stuff to the market. Just like, oh, that smells lovely. I would, I'd love to try that and just see if I could get some free snacks from people who might be moving food, or food around early in the morning. But that'll come. Sure. Um, I'll give you something. I'll give you something while you're doing that because you, I presumed you probably would have gotten up a little earlier, sleeping on the ground. Mm -hmm. People tend to wake up earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll give you something before you meet with them at the uh, at the at the end um, before they've woken up. Um, uh, you run into the farmer, uh, who is the only person up and moving about this time. Um, and. He is still, st he's standing in his, uh, he's got like a, like a right next to his, to his farmhouse, which sits up against the road. And then he's got some, some gating up for the sheep to take up to the moors when he wants to graze them. Um, he's standing in what looks like a pig pen. Um, uh, but all that's there is a deserted sty. Uh, it's clear there was a pig here. You can tell, uh, you, well, let's see what your skill sets are. Jonesy. Um, yeah, yeah it doesn't look like the pig's been or... missing long, but um, uh, are you going to talk to the farmer or see, see if maybe he can give you some information and maybe give you some free food too? Yeah, I'm going to start up a conversation with him and, um, and just, you know, um, ask him about his pig and ask him about the area. I was definitely asking about those, um, that white, the, the circle, the stone circle, if he's ever seen it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll probably use, you know, probably my flattery. Okay. A um, little bit of flattery and perhaps a little bit of bargaining with him um, yeah. or a little bit of food for some help. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you're, he, uh, he gives you some more information. Uh, well, most of it's not particularly useful information. Um, I, like it's just local like rumors about so and so and this or that, as largely inconsequential. Uh, he does mention the the the, the uh, Castle Rig Circle up in the um, up in the moors um, and says it is uh, something that like you out of towners do tend to come by a lot for. But he beyond that he knows it's old the sheep like to graze around it sometimes though though as of late they've been they've been kind of steering clear of it for one reason or another mm -hmm. um uh and aside from that uh he does agree to give you um um some nice fresh uh some nice fresh goat's milk um in exchange for uh giving him any information if while you're digging around town um if you see anything about his his missing pig because he just can't believe that it has been stolen. He's like, why would there be a pig rustler in Manasty? There's five people here. <laughs> yeah. And he's pretty certain it was stolen. Like it didn't run away or it doesn't look like it could have got out or anything like that. Yeah. Um, he's fairly sure it's stolen. And as you're looking at the pen, it doesn't look broken or anything. And you think if the pig got out on its own, it would have smashed through the gate or something. Um, and like the, the gate, the gate's not locked because he doesn't assume there are thieves in town, but the gate yeah. isn't broken either. So the pig didn't crash through it. Gotcha. Okay. No problem. All right. I'm on it. Jonesy will find that pig or what happened to that pig. What would you like me to do? To Jonesy will do ya. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I'll get to. All right. With that, you make your way to the end with, with, um, with the rest of the group there at the, uh, at the table. So uh, what, what are you guys discussing as uh, Jonesy wanders up while all of you are taking your seats? I would have been finished by recalling out of the dancing. If Jonesy wasn't there, I would have just alluded to Jonesy's story in the car. If he was, I would have gestured to his story. That's all. OK. Um, so you guys fill each other in on those uh, those dreams, I'm assuming. Does anyone keep their dream to themselves? I don't know I don't that I would share with Rosa that I had the same dream. I I would be so freaked out that she described my dream exactly that I would just be quiet. Yeah, that is a little disconcerting. <laughs> uh, I would be interested in actually discussing and so uh, more or less mentioning. So you were one of the dancers in the dream. 
Mm, yes, that was one of the dancers. Uh, let's see, what else did I see there? Um, someone was perhaps preparing some something. Um, no, that isn't quite right. Uh, someone with a knife was nearby, yes. Uh, but I can't quite make it out. I was very focused, but not focused on the dance. Did anyone else have the same dream? Why must we discuss dreams? They're meaningless. <laughs> I'm just going to take a long drink of water, and a very long drink of water. Fair enough. Um, um, I'd, I'd like to volunteer a, a little bit of shaking this to my pillar of sanity for honesty is the best policy, being as no one is volunteering to share or join in my, you know, confiding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Laws, the knife really, it's hard for you to get it out of your brain. It is very, it was very odd looking. It really didn't look like anything it didn't look like any any design that you would be familiar with. But it was very distinct and very vivid. So it's not like it's like a uh, it's not like it was like a, a, a an amorphous dream object. You have a very vivid idea of exactly what that knife looks like, but you can't place its origin at all. Do you remember Rosa? Do you remember what the knife looked like? I know you said you didn't, you weren't nearby. Hmm. Um, would I be able to, well, actually, well, but, well um, Dr. Laws, maybe could you describe it for me? I mean, I, I've done much work in archaeology. Uh, perhaps I can recognize where it came from. I will describe the okay. knife I said. I have not actually said I was the knife man, though. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but you do describe the knife for her? I will describe the knife for her. Okay. Fair enough. Get caught up there. All right. Um, as he describes the knife to you, Rosa, like it, you can kind of like, you're trying to rationalize his description and it is very vivid, like disturbingly so. Usually when people describe their dreams, like, because everybody does that with their buddies. Oh, and I dreamed. And like, they're always these vague stories because by the time we get to the point where we're telling our friends our dreams, most of them have drifted out of our brain. But like, his, his description is like, he gives you like the inches of the blade, the length of the handle, the texture on his hand. He's able to give you every single detail. Um, and the technical proficiency uh, of whoever crafted it um, is uh, clearly must have been great, but the description implies a metal or a design that is extremely old, um, but it's nothing that any culture you're familiar with would do. And that's odd because you have spent a lot of casual time in archaeological research, especially with artifacts. You like museums growing up and you enjoyed looking at, uh, at old things, but it's, cer it's certainly what he's describing isn't of any modern craftsmanship, but it also doesn't fit any other construction of any culture you're aware of. Okay. Um, as he's describing it to me, Helen, would you maybe be trying to sketch the knife? Or could I ask you to if you weren't? Yeah, I was I was thinking about that. Like I pull out, out my, my sketchbook and I'm just drawing as they're describing it. And once it's done, I'm gonna just again slide the notebook and be like, is this is this pretty accurate? You know what's interesting, um, Helen, is as you were as you were drawing the knife, um you started drawing it while the doctor was describing it and you got ahead of his description. But by the time your drawing is done, it looks exactly as he described it. And Mike, you said you didn't, you were not, you were not going into anything about your dream? No, I was not. <laughs> uh. um, that's Alrighty. all. Um, you didn't, well, um, this is awkward. 
You seem quite intimate with this knife. I'd rather not discuss that that portion of the dream. Oh, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> right then. Well, not to intrude, I'm sure you've seen many, you know, dark and, and odd things in your profession. All righty. Um, so, uh, what are you guys planning to do with the day? Um, oh, go ahead, I count. Looking at the, the picture of the knife, um, from what I've studied in the occult, uh, and what I know of other cultures through anthropology, would this be, would they, can I discern a purpose that this knife would have primarily been used for? Obviously, it's if it's elaborate, it's very ritualistic in nature. So you said you have a cult? Yes. Would you like to spend a point for, from a cult to get a little bit extra? Sure. All right. So the more you like look at the knife and think about also Jonesy's description of, of the, the circle at, at Castle Rig. Um, and then like you, you're looking out the window and as you see the landscape, it starts to remind you of, of a book uh, from years ago on uh, which cults of the northern of the northern lake district um castle rig circle not surprisingly was a focal point for the witches um per, uh, peculiarly there were rumors of human sacrifice um but the victims were all buried alive you know all of this very interesting that I've ended up in this place and why I'm sober. And I'll, hmm. Well, you haven't asked for a drink. It's a bit early in the morning for anything short of port or sherry, and I don't think they have anything of that here. Oh, do you and think as if summoned by bartender magic, Otto <laughs> appears by the table <laughs> with a nice, um, you know, surprisingly better tasting alcohol than last night. I guess the evening of aging helped, <laughs> but it is at least something to put down your stomach. Uh, It'll be one shilling. <laughs> shilling. Yeah, you know, Hild. Um, if you sound, keep him coming. Hild, ha have you considered calling our cab driver to, well, you know, deliver a bottle of a better vintage to you? I thought of it. No, it might be worthwhile. Um, I wouldn't mind perhaps getting my belongings from the other hotel if you were interested in uh, having them run things up to us. Well, certainly. I think the bartender's still looking for a cask of my Amontillado for me. <laughs> um, and while they're having that conversation, you all do notice that uh, the radio is playing that static again. Very irritatedly, get up, walk over, put a 10 pound note down on the bar, and then smash the radio. <laughs> <laughs> then go I back. see we are on the reasonable response <laughs> stage. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so you get up there and you, you grab that thing and you just smash it, right? Pieces go scattering across the floor. Anna practically jumps out of her skin, gives you a look that you're certain if you had not laid that 10 pound note down, would have stripped flesh from bone. <laughs> but as she sees the 10 pound note, which is probably like four times what that that wireless cost on in all honesty she just grumbles and takes the money and hands you like a bottle that is unopened and just sits it in front of you and storms off to her room <laughs> take the bottle walk back over and sit down open it oh hell to you are a wonderful you negotiator <laughs> it's early jonesy i'm assuming you're sitting there with a glass waiting for your free portion of that I mean, it's there. If he's gonna fill it up, it's gonna get filled up. I mean, it's more like this, like on the table, like making a little noise. 
if it happens to draw your attention and you feel like you want to help me out. After I've had a few. You're good to touch. Well, you know, we heard an interesting thing the other day. It turns out that, uh, that Mary, uh, she lives near here. We don't have much else going on. Would you want to go and see if we can find her, talk to her about the painting? And her, her former husband went missing several years ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and who knows? That would be Jack Waring. Maybe she knows a little bit about, you know, um, previous Mary uh, and why she fell out of the picture. Um, while you're discussing that, you do notice, especially with the radio now smashed, you hear that music again, but it's not mixed with static and it's coming from somewhere outside. Are there entertainers in town? Oh, Not that I, it's small town. Hild, you went and scared the staff off. Now we can't ask any questions. Well, we'll go outside and ask the questions. Um, Anything interesting happen last night, John? Did anything happen, interesting happen last night, Jonesy, while you were out? Nope. Everything was good. Slept like a baby. Talked to the farmer. He said that the circle is real. And he said that tourists come and look at it. And that his animals are off it right now. So there's something the yeah. animals don't like about the circle right now. So I say we talk to Mary or we go look at the circle because if I'm not drinking, I'm bored. Oh, I understand that one, Josie. I was just thinking myself that uh, something interesting to do would be grand. I all appreciate right. you all you all sharing your dreams. That was really nice. I think I it's my duty to save someone who gets buried alive. That's what I think is going to happen. So don't worry. Jonesy's on it. So remember to be kind to your pal Jonesy because he's probably had a dream that he's going to dig one of you guys up. Oh, that's... I need to check on my brother first. Oh, did you want to ask him to come with? Uh, he looked a bit peckish. He, he's not feeling well. I think it would be better for him to rest. Okay. I will go back to the my brother's room. Okay. Is he awake yet? Was, well, he is. I, um, he's looking at himself oddly in the mirror and looking at his hand, which th has that thick skin um, that's like loose. When you get closer to him, though, you do notice that the skin at the fingertips has begun to split, um, but he's not bleeding. And underneath, there's like kind of like a. Um, it's hard to describe. Have you ever seen like the texture of an earthworm? Mm -hmm. That's what the meat underneath where the skin has split looks like in his on his hand. That's not typically a good sign. <laughs> you don't know what it's a sign of, <laughs> but it's not a good this sign. This is outside the realm of your medicine. <laughs> Joffrey, Joffrey. What, 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 what? Where were you yesterday? Uh, well, was, you arrived in town. Was I with you? You, arrived, you arrived, I was with you at the bar. Right. You arrived in town, downtown two days ago at this point. Mm -hmm. Where did you go? Well, I, I don't. How did you I was get just here? following? I I rode the train to 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 the other town, and then I I followed the the music here. So you came by foot. Yes. Well, well foot and ferry. 
Okay, so you came across the ferry. Yeah, yeah. And then when you got off the ferry, it was a nice boat ride, Placid Lake. Where did you go? I just, I was, I was worried. And then I was asking locals, but most people would, didn't want to talk to me because I was from out of town. And then, um, I, and then I was at the bar. And then you came. There was time before between that. So imagine, I'm, remember, do you remember the boat? Do you remember the ferry? I, I do. I want you to remember the ferry. Think about the lake. Right. And the ferry brought me home. Brought you home? Well, here. You brought me here. And then when the ferry docked, you got off the mm -hmm. ferry and came and went to, did you go to the inn? Did you go to? As you're interrogating him, he kind of like almost with, with, a, with a panic speed kind of grabs your shirt and, and looks at you with like these pleading eyes that you have not seen since you were a child uh, and says, when, when, when it's time, you'll help, right? Of course, Joffrey, I'll help you. You, you, and with that, he actually seems more relieved than if you told him he wasn't dying. <laughs> he calms down and kind of sloops down on the edge of his bed and sits. Am I getting any luck trying to get him to recollect his day? Not really. And uh, would you like to spend anything on the stability test here? Yeah, I'll spend two. <laughs> All righty. Drop them. And you are fine. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I will head back downstairs. I'll make sure he's comfortable. Joffrey, what was the last time? Basically. What when was the last time you ate? Well, last night, I guess. Did he eat last night? He was with us Maybe. last night. <laughs> You're not entirely sure. <laughs> you gonna talk to the bartender to have her bring up some food later? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll pay her to bring him some food in a bit. Perfect. Okay. All right. Eventually, the doctor comes back down. Um, do you fill them in on what happened up there or are you just kind of going wherever they lead you? I will inform them that I am having no luck in getting Joffrey to remember where he was for the past, for two, two, what, two nights, the night two nights ago or the day of yesterday. Um, I'm gonna be going about town asking people, have you seen my brother? <laughs> Did you see my brother? What did he ask you? Did you see where he went? Okay. Um, are you guys going with him or what's what's the plan for the rest of you? I'll walk along. I'm headed to Mary's house. My name is Mary. I mean, That's Mary, said, yeah. You were thinking about going to Mary's house? I meant to go see Mary as well. Um, I mean, that's fine. Yeah. She's for someone in town. Therefore, she is yeah. someone that he might have talked to. <laughs> Your brother in the picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, as you guys make your way outside, um, you hear that music much more clearly. Um, you hear that. It's coming from that uh, that abandoned school that you guys passed by. Well, um, I'd be trying to take a peek, looking around, slowing my step up, um, just curiosity getting the better of me. But at the same time, okay. um, I wouldn't be trying to pull people's attention away from going to see Mary. 
Okay. So it's so it's basically a one road town. So um, on the way towards what um, where you're fairly sure Mary's house is, you will pass close enough to the school to at least get a good look at it. Um, and as you're walking along, that music it gets it gets um, louder, and then you can hear the static. So you know it is actually coming from a radio. For some reason, you couldn't hear the static from further away. But as you get closer, you hear that same static. Um, and as you walk past the school in the schoolyard there is a wireless playing that music and there are two little girls dancing to the music that you hear too not some other music like everyone else in town they're dancing to the music that you hear too and they are dancing the same way that uh uh, uh rosa and helen were dancing like in their dream um they're dancing the same way around a pig that it looks like they have butchered Well, Jonesy, I believe you found Mike Jonesy. Okay. I gotta go get this pig. Um, gonna... Is anyone going with him, or are you just letting him to run off on his own? Um, I think I'd be a bit uh, shocked at the children dancing around the corpse of a pig. That I wouldn't need jerk react. I'd, I'd just be a bit startled and stare. Fair enough. As you um. As you get to where the girls are dancing, Jonesy, uh, you can tell they're twins. And they're, the dancing looks familiar to you too. It's very strange. You don't know why or where you, where you recognize that dancing from, but you do. Uh, and as the girls, uh, as you get closer, the girls look like, they, look like they're crying and they stop dancing. And, and they uh, and they look up at you with this, like, look of shock and and disgust, because they're like they look at you, and then the girls both kind of look at you and say, not in unison, but kind of in their own ways each, say to you, "Why isn't the pig coming back to life? When we do the dance, they're supposed to come back to life." I'm going to, am I close to them? Yes. Um, I'm going to get, I'm um, like, are they, how, how little, like, are they really little girls? Or like? Um, around nine or 10, maybe. Okay. So I'm going to get on like my knee and just kind of like, like what, what kind of dance are you trying to do, girl? Uh, is there an investigative skill you're throwing in there? Yeah, I'm gonna try. Um, I'm gonna try. Um, do, 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 I think I have. Hold on. Um, reassurance. I'm just gonna try and like sure. gain their confidence and like let me try and gain talk their trust to me about it. Yeah, talk to me about it. Maybe I can help you with it. This seems really familiar to me. Kind of. You know, it's. It's not the most pleasant experience for you because to kind of get down, you sit down on the schoolyards, like gravel surface with them. Um, and like the warm blood of the pig is seeping through your trousers <laughs> as you sit there, which is, you know, not the most pleasant feeling. But you, you kind of are trying to reassure them and telling them not to worry um, and that you hear things in the wireless, too. Um, and as you're like reassuring them and they're telling you why they did it. Um, and they start sharing the same dreams that the others are saying that they have, uh, dreams of dancing and being buried alive. Um, although none of your none of your friends said anything about being buried alive, so you're not really sure where that dream came from. But that is a uh, a dream that, uh, that that they describe having, and they describe having the same dreams that you are. Um, and all and you and your friends, and she points at your friends over there. So like, and all of you are in those dreams too. Yes, Dr. Michaels. Do, at any point, do they mention the smell for being buried alive? No. No, they do not? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask them what they killed this pig with. Maybe you had the wrong, maybe you had the wrong knife. I hear there's a very special knife. In you. Yeah, but we don't know where that is. So we just use this and they hold up a bread knife. <laughs> <laughs> it is covered in pig's blood. <laughs> All right. So there are twins standing around a dead pig where they were dancing, holding a knife. How much uh, stability would you like to donate to this test? 
Me? I'm great. This is great for me. This is great for you? Okay. Um, it's not as great as you would like it to be. This is uh, <laughs> the kind of thing that gets hobos killed. Um, <laughs> go ahead and lose uh, four stability for that. <laughs> It is disconcerting, but the girls otherwise seem harmless. It's just, it's part of what is so disconcerting and what is so disruptive to you psycho psychologically. And the rest of you who hear bits of this conversation um, get, get a similar feeling is that there is a disconnect between these, between your experiences and these girls' experiences and normalcy. And yet it, the, it's like the wires aren't crossing the way they should right like if they're doing this they should be weird in other ways but they're not and if they're not weird in other ways they shouldn't be doing this and that's what's not that's what's not gelling with any of you does that make sense um oh and as you're talking to them One second, sorry. All right, so it looks like uh, the Viscount has to be uh, departing the game, um, which is fine. I'll be taking over for his character as, as necessary in the story. Uh, thanks for playing, Mike. I hope you had a good time at this, at least. I did, I did very much. I just, I've got to go take care of some. I totally understand. Thanks for playing and I uh, hope you've enjoyed all the games you played. All right, guys. So, uh, 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 while you're reassuring the girls, um, they are willing to, uh, uh, or uh, willing, like they give you information about where they're from. Um, and this just particularly catches your ear, Rosa. Um, they, they mention their mother, Mary. Oh. Um, honestly, at the point of Jones is getting them to calm down and they're talking, I will have started gravitating closer. Um, when okay. I do hear the prompt for Mary, I'm going to uh, ask, wait, Mary, and, and that was, um, and I'll deliberately click my fingers and then lead them on with like, uh, her husband, what was his name? Oh, uh, uh, you, you mean daddy? Yes, Jack. Was is that your dad's name, Jack? Yes. Yeah, that's that's dad. Yeah. Oh, fine. so you're the wearing children. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. D Daddy and 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 mommy wearing. Okay. I'm going oh. to walk over if that's okay, and I'm going to say, "Is this a picture of your mommy?" I'm going to show that picture in my sketchbook. Okay, um, she looks at the picture. The two girls look at the picture, and they're like, "That's not. That's not. Mom that's Daddy, but that's not Mommy." Well, well, I'm. I'm confused. They look vi visibly distressed by the dead pig. Like they look like they were certain it was coming back to life, and they're looking panicked, and they're covered in blood, and they're not happy about the situation at all. Well, the, here's the thing, sweethearts. Um, you might have done a bit of a mistake, but you know what? Sometimes we get bacon out of mistakes, don't we? <laughs> so, how about this? You promised to learn. But I love it. <laughs> you promised to learn your lesson, and you're going to need to make reparations for what you did. And, well. I'll promise to help you put good words forward for why you did it. That way you're not alone. Oh, oh okay. Will, will you take us home? Well, that depends. Um, we were going to visit the, well, Mary, who, who we thought was here, but apparently is a different lady. Um, do you, and I'm gonna gesture towards the house we were heading towards. Do you live there? Yeah, that's home. Okay, well, yes, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and make a stop there. But, um, sweethearts, do 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 hand me the knife. <laughs> they shakingly hand the knife to you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> 
And with that, um, I'm going to try to usher him away from the pig and, and then kind of gesture over my shoulder uh, at the uh, Jonesy and say, I don't know what you can do about that, but don't leave it out to rot. It'll smell rancid. Could you find the farmer? Fair enough. Um, if we're not far, I'll go grab the farmer and just let him know where his pig's at. And just tell him where it is okay. and I'll catch up with everybody if I got time. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, he seems less than plussed about the situation, but uh, <laughs> like, not much you can do for him now. Um, uh, I'm assuming you reassure him by saying that you'll get the mother to like compensate him or something, right? Or do you just abandon yeah. him with the information that it's dead? <laughs> I'm pig, it's over there, but uh, I'm not going to be happy about it. You're not gonna, <laughs> your dead pig's over there. We're gonna go. I'll tell him we're gonna talk to the mom. The two kid, two girls. The two girls said something. I'm gonna head over and talk to the mom. And we'll we'll make it right. Good enough. Okay. All right. And you guys get to the house about the time that Jonesy is walking up as well. So you're all arriving at the house about the same time. Um. Uh, you walk up to the door. Uh, the girls. Uh open the door, they use a key, they have to open the door, and as they do, their their mother, uh, um, a fairly plain looking British woman, um, answers the door, sees the girls are with you, sees them covered in blood, looks shocked, but not as shocked as she probably should look, and tries to quickly close the door as soon as the children are in. Um, I'm going to hold up the knife, uh, politely put my foot in the door, as any good saleswoman can, and will highlight, well, madam, you're forgetting your bread knife, unfortunately, and, uh, well, um, as we've helped your children kind of clean the mess, perhaps allowing us an opportunity to talk and at least wash ourselves up. Okay. Um... And I'd like to use my intimidation um, by holding the knife. Oh, so you're gonna apply a little, more. you're gonna apply a little pressure to her then. Yeah, but, like imply, like use, not necessarily hold the knife threateningly, but be like, "Hey, your kids are covered in blood. Maybe shutting the door on people is not the best option at this moment." That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yep. Got it. Okay. Now I'm on the same page as you. Um. She looks. She gets kind of a, uh, a like a like a scared look in her face as she um, as she has like a, as she backs into her living room. And interestingly, by the way, Helen, um, as she backs into the living room, you turn to uh, to Jonesy, and you say to Jonesy, you know, the wallpaper is going to be yellow with red tulips. And as she backs away into the living room, the wallpaper is exactly how you expected it to look. It's more faded than you thought it would be, but it's exactly how you expected it to look. Um, but as Mary backs into the living room, um, she says, <laughs> they have these strange dreams like they, about being buried alive and, and they say they learn to dance in their dreams. They, <laughs> They did this once before with the with the family dog. It's why we don't have pets anymore. Well, that's um, well, that's frightening, and I, I respect why you are feeling hesitant. But though it was unprompted, I do appreciate you sharing it with us. We would like to get cleaned up, and um, well, ironically, well, we would mind a spot of tea and perhaps a bit of adult civil conversation as well, because well, we've been dealing with some rather uh, strange things here as well. For instance, um, well, you are the Wares family, right? Waring. Waring, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and you're related to James, right? Oh, yes. Jack is what he went by. Jack, of course. I'm sorry. Thank you for helping to correct me and clarify. So but that's my uh, estranged husband. He, oh. he vanished a while ago. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, uh, you know, honestly, a much better conversation to have inside of a house rather than outside on the doorstep. I would like your permission. Could and we with come a in? somewhat 
with a somewhat exhausted look, she hangs her head a little bit and holds the door open and lets lets all of you in. Um, and as you all enter the uh, as you all enter the the house, um, uh, I as you all enter the house, uh, the rest of you get that same familiar feeling, like you as she's leading you to the sitting room and making tea, you like are each of you is in your own in your own at your own pace is like saying this will be there the only one that you're wrong about is you're like and there will be a table there but the table's not where you expected it to be but otherwise this house feels familiar you all know you've been here before okay so on an unconscious turning right towards where the restroom is and recognizing where like the bread knife came from okay okay and so I you know I guess we'll probably you know off put her as the comment of like I'll go get rest you know washed up in the washroom as I head right towards it. Okay. Um, while he's while, while she's getting uh, uh, washed up in the re in the in the bathroom, the um, uh, she talks to you about some stuff, and um, I'm going to speed things up a little bit along here because I'd like us to kind of get through more of the story, and we're running up on time, so I'm going to kind of compress some stuff here real quick. So I apologize if we're rushing through a little bit, but. Um, so she fills you in. Um, she is Jack's uh, second um, wife. His first wife was um, um, she can't quite remember her name, but when you show her, when Helen shows her the the the, the drawing she did, that she's like that's her. That's that's his first wife. But she committed she committed suicide after their children were adopted out. And um, then Jack kind of just did his own thing. You know, he he raised those kids at the school. I was surprised he was so willing to let them go. But then then, like I said, he let them go and then she died and he won he milled about and ran the school for a little while until one day he just didn't go back to the school. And he, uh, and then he started going to a, a, a house up in the moors. And that's where he spent most of his time. And then one day he never came back from there. And I went up there, but he was gone. Um, out of curiosity, uh, and uh, this is a very simple question, out of character, do I recognize mm -hmm. that I'm adopted or do I you know, have memories of a mother and father. Um, you know, you don't have you don't have any um, recollection of being told you were adopted. None of you do, but all of you know that you never saw any photographs younger than the photograph that you saw at the bar. So okay. it doesn't entirely not line up. That's you it. know, um, but if one of you wanted to call one of your family members, that's totally something you could do. Yeah, actually, that, that. that's one thing that I was going to. Um, one, I'm I'm a little shaken uh, by everything going mm -hmm. on. I would call Priscilla, my sister, and try to get clarification out of that. Yeah, um, when you make that phone call, she does. Uh, she confirms that yeah, that you were adopted through a through a private agency um, it, back in in 1905. Well, I would use this to prompt and um, I guess share with the rest of the group that you know, oh man, I just found this out. Uh, find a reason to connect with the. Um, I'm sorry, do we ever get, is, her name's Mary, right? It's the first wife well, we don't know the name of. Uh, connect with Mary and, and share the story. And does Mary look significantly older than me? A bit. She looks like she's maybe in her like uh, early 40s at this point. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to piece together um, the age of the children. Maybe, plus, about 10, yeah. maybe about 10 years older than you. Okay. Is the oldest of all of you is about 35. Mm -hmm. um, Helen, while you're, uh, while all this is going on, you know, you're passing around the picture and looking at everything that's familiar and, you know, like, and you're just grabbing and like, you almost drop your art book for some reason, which you never do. You usually have pretty steady hands. Um, but you're like, what the heck? And when you look at your hand though, your skin is getting loose and your sense of touch doesn't feel right. 
I'm going to um, just be like running my hands like against my own skin. I'm going to kind of run it against the wall, just seeing if, if the sensation will change. Um, and I assume it does. Um, you do get a bit of, you do get a bit of sensation. Like you can feel the wall there, but it feels dull and deadened. Like you're wearing a glove. Mm -hmm. I'm um if Rose is still in the room, I'm just gonna say, Rose, are you are you feeling all right? And um, well, emotionally, I've been better. Um <laughs> but I will do the um telltale pat. Like beyond my uh hearts, I think I'm fit as a fiddle. Why? What's wrong? I just I don't feel right. I'm just gonna be looking at my hands really. Oh no, no. <laughs> Oh my, um, you don't think what, um, I'll, I'll drop my voice down to a whisper. Dr. Law's brother's thing was contagious, do you? You were sitting right next to him. Maybe I caught whatever madness he was having. Oh, I, not sure. Um, I think we should ask him to look you over like uh, immediately. And then, Dr. Laws, are you with us, Stephen? Okay, I'm going to um, just whisper my symptoms to him that I'm, I feel like my hands, the skin on my hands feels loose, even though visually it's not. Oh, he's going to check my pulse. Ah. No pulse. <laughs> well, that's concerning. <laughs> I will turn to Mary. Describe Joffrey. Did a gentleman describe Joffrey. Happened to come here two oh, days ago or yesterday? Actually, really quick, Dr. Michael, while, while you're thinking about this and you're trying to collect your thoughts for a good question, you're starting to realize something. You're related to these people. This man was your father and you feel wrong. What, what are your pillars of sanity again? Great. I save lives. Humanity is essentially good. Being in the country makes me human again. Mm-hmm. So that last one. Uh, <laughs> um, it's starting to fall apart. Uh, so this is where you suffer something called mythos shock. Um, reduce your sanity by two. Ow. As you are now beginning to put some pieces together, you're not entirely sure you're human. Gotcha. I will still ask Mary about Joffrey. <laughs> uh, what are you asking her specifically again? Sorry. Did just about him in general? Did he come by? Did he come by either two nights ago or sometime yesterday? Okay. Um, a look of recognition does hit her face. Like you can tell immediately that she's seen him. Um, but she, but it's also pretty obvious that she would have done what she did to you guys. And your, your brother was clearly not in the kind of state where he would have jammed his foot in the door. So there's a good chance that he saw her and then she recognized something and immediately backed out of the situation. That's the impression you're getting. And she does not seem to have pleasant thoughts about Jack anytime she talks about him. So Jack went missing shortly after all of us were adopted out, and I will phrase it as such. Yep. I apologize. Um, I do have to drop, um, but okay. uh, I can't help but not, uh, as I've made jokes every other session, that we are now in the discussion of how Jack went up the hill and didn't come back down. <laughs> so the first no wife down is this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I'll take care of everyone. I apologize. Uh, thank Bye, you. I'm sorry we ran a little long tonight. Mm -hmm. Take care. Yeah, I have to go too. I'm sorry. Bedtime and all. I apologize. That was great all playing right. with um, you all. Well, actually, on that note, uh, we can wrap up the story if you guys think you know what's going on. Um, I would like to take a wild guess, though I haven't bought enough vowels. So okay. uh, I would like to argue that either A, um, we as children 
uh, have either passed away and or we are being used as sacrificial lambs to raise the first wife. Interesting. Anyone else have any thoughts? Yeah, or were used as sacrificial lambs to raise the first wife and it didn't go great. And, and that's why we're kind all of, right. You know. So you guys are on the right track um, because two of you are dropping and I'll be down to two players at that point. I think this is probably a good stopping point. We just ran a little longer um, mm -hmm. than I had planned and I apologize for that. Um, basically to to fill you in on the gap and I hope it doesn't spoil the fun for you having me do this, but basically what was happening here is you all were adopted out. Jack is your birth father, but Jack is a monster. Um, a little bit of library investigation from some other clues you could have picked up around town. Um, you would have found out that this town gets destroyed once every 119 years, and this is that anniversary. His children are all monsters, and that's all of you. And that ritual is how you shed your skin and join your family below. And that is the horror of this story. Where do you run when the monster is you? Gotcha. That was a nice twist, and thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. So, and I apologize that we didn't get through it a little faster. Um, I have a standard pacing that I use, and I should have thought, you know, two and a half hours. I should compress some of this. So I apologize for that if that was a little bit of a of a of a spoiler for you, and I had to rush to that. But I do hope you had fun with the parts we did get to play. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've never had this adventure not end in half the party uh, um, deciding that they didn't want to be monsters and trying to kill the other half of the party and flee the Lake District. That is usually how it ends. So for once, the story <laughs> didn't end in immediate bloodshed and violence. I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> Although who's to say it might have. Um, uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a fun one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed Trail of Cthulhu. I hope this was a... a um, insightful for a, a, a more narrative uh, uh, game than what you're probably used to getting with D&D. Um, it's sure. just a different approach to role playing and I think they're both very interesting and I love to see how those two different game systems collide with one another. Um, and yeah, thanks again for playing guys. I had a blast. You all were real great. You personalized your characters very well. It was a lot of fun to, to, to see how you guys portrayed each of those characters, to see the different takes. Um, I think that uh, uh, specifically uh, um, Jonesy and, and Helen, those two characters I have seen play so many different ways. So it's always fun to see someone take it and run it a completely different way. Like, uh, um, like normally when someone plays Helen, I get the art fop and that is not the direction you went with her at all. So that was really interesting to see a Helen that was more staid and serious than in other, other times that I've run this story. That was really cool. It's always, it's always interesting to see how the same character can be so different in other players' hands. 